Recently, I took a shortcut through the Irish Financial Centre onto Cusman Quay in Dublin. As I did so, I came face to face with the Fam Memorial and its bronze figures. Despite living in the Dublin area for many years, it was the first time I saw it in reality and it caused me to stop. As many know, I'm sure its current location is quite historical. From this point on St. Patrick's Day 1846, one of the first immigrant famine ships left with 210 people on board. Much has been written about the famine and its impact on Ireland and its people. Every Irish family has a famine story and a famine memory. The sculptures that day in Dublin reminded me of a particular corner of a field on the farm I grew up on. Despite the tilling and the upgrading over two generations of my family, this corner was left untouched. I remember as a young person one day asking my dad, what is it about this plot of land? And in answer he took me out and he showed me on the ground the outline of a small hut, a small home, and also the furrows that surrounded it. It was a famine home. The family had left after the second crop failure and their neighbours were unable to support them, being in the same predicament. We know that on their way to the nearest workhouse, two people died, two members of that family, a mother and a child. The family were never to return to that home. It remains frozen in time, a timeless reminder of a past and a real people, a real family that endured true hardship. Such sacred places, such memorials have the power to connect time, peoples and worlds. The famine memorial joins the world of the observer to the world of the famine walker. We are a common people with a common history and in need of solidarity. The famine walkers on the quay of Dublin find their likes in the many who in Jesus' time queued for bread and today in our world in the growing number who go hungry or join the queues outside food centres or welfare offices. As the people of 19th century Ireland for, begged for the world to take note, so do the poor of our world today. Their pleading is the same, food, shelter, medicine, fairness, peace, justice and love. When the world looks away, people suffer and people die. Ireland has its memory of the great famine, the great hunger, and its voice continues to exist across every generation. There are many facts about hunger. There is enough food in the world for everyone to have the nourishment necessary for a healthy and productive life, yet one in eight every night go to bed hungry. The sensation of hunger, a lack of food in the stomach, is universal, but for some it becomes undernourishment, malnutrition and starvation. We are told crop failure and poverty leave people vulnerable to starvation, but in fact, in the words of the United Nations, it's political failure that leads to famine. This political failure can take many forms, war and displacement, refusal to meet the challenges of climate change, lack of ethical investment, market forces driven by pure greed and food wastage. During the great Irish hunger of the 19th century, many would feel the wider world simply looked away. If you look, believe this, how can we turn away today as people lose their homes, children die, family structure crumble and some starve? It is reported that Einstein once said, no problem can be solved by the same consciousness that caused it in the first place. Is this the challenge that Jesus wants to put before his disciples in today's gospel, I wonder? We are told he took the bread, he said a blessing, he broke that bread and he gave it to the hungry that day. A four-part action that is embedded in every great meal, every great sharing, every great sense of solidarity. On that day of the miracle in Matthew's account, an apparent scarcity became a place of sufficiency, of having enough. The actions that made this plentitude real were the simple life-changing actions, taking, blessing, breaking and giving. Jesus gives what we give him, he takes it, but implicit in the action of Jesus' taking is our action of offering. We must be open at what we have to share what we have and to decide to offer it to another. 
coercion and force is not part of God's Eucharistic way and cannot be part of our common solidarity and share to humanity. When the disciples decided to offer to Jesus the five loaves and two fishes, Jesus in turn offered them to his Father in for blessing. Jesus does not look at the flaws in the act of bringing or in the flaws in what is being offered. He simply blesses and prays and offers it to God. We all too often, we offer and share with a certain smugness of self-sufficiency, but that is not Christ's way. We cannot give and then walk away or look away until the next time we are in the mood or feel we are in a position to offer. When Jesus breaks the bread on that day, he is also breaking the mindsets of the disciples, touching on the injustices of his own society, challenging the policies and leaders of his time. Christ's own body became broken on the cross so as to encompass us, ours and all in need. We too need to feel the pain of the suffering of the other so that we too can grow and learn. Jesus, having accepted our offering, prays and blessed it, and then he shares it. We too are part of the hungry. That sharing of Jesus, that bread being offered by Jesus, is given to us, because in our breaking, in our offering, we begin to understand we too are brother, sister, son, father, child. We are one with each other and humanity. We are in, in communion with all and our world. Any understanding I would suggest of our well-being, our salvation that separates us from the other, no matter where they are, their gender, their race or time, is both false and full of failure. On that miracle day, all ate their fill because a simple and apparently insufficient offering was joined with the blessing of Christ. On that day in the lonely place in Palestine, with a simple act of offering, another positive step was taken in the building of the kingdom. A small but significant act moving the future of a chosen and loved humanity forward. How can we and are we willing to be part of that dream today? Thank you.